Welcome to the Invested Dads Podcast, simplifying financial topics so that you can take action and make your financial situation better, helping you to understand the current world of financial planning and investments. Here are your hosts, Josh Robb and Austin Wilson. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Invested Dads Podcast, a podcast where we take you on a journey to better your financial future. I am Austin Wilson, research analyst at Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. And I'm Josh Robb, director of wealth management at Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. Austin, how can people help us grow our podcast? Yeah, we would love it if you would subscribe. If you're not subscribed, so hit that follow plus whatever that subscribe button on your player is. We would appreciate that. And also, feel free to visit our website. And sign up for our weekly newsletter to get notified each and every Thursday when we drop a new episode. It's great. It has little show notes on what we're going to be talking about and a direct link to listen. Probably the best newsletter out there. It's the best weekly newsletter you need to have in your email box. So today, we're revisiting our 2022 predictions. I nailed them. And issuing new 2023 predictions on what we think is going to happen in this year. And let's just... Get it out there. We didn't see 2022 coming the way it happened. So we're probably going to be wrong about 2023 as well. Usually are. But we want you to know what we're thinking as of January 2023. So I'll start. Okay. This is last year. This is revisiting my 2022 predictions. So my 2022 prediction number one was that the S&P 500, which is Standard & Poor's 500, largest market cap U.S. stocks Mm -hmm. index, right, would end that. A very precise number of 5,362, which at that point was an increase over the end of the prior year of 12.5%, which would have been about a 14% total return, including Mm -hmm. about a percent and a half in dividends. Was I right, Josh? You were very close, only off by about 30%. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. the market was down. We used the SP500 ETF to track it, and that was down 18%. So no bueno. No. Got that one wrong. I also believed that the emerging market stocks would outperform U.S. stocks in 2022. I was wrong. You're wrong. Emerging market stocks were actually down slightly more than the U.S. You were close on this. Closer on this. You weren't off by 30%. I was not off as much, but I was close. This is a funny one. Yes. I predicted that Bitcoin, because think of where we were last Mm -hmm. year. It was a pretty good time for, for cryptos. I thought Bitcoin would hit one $100,000 per Bitcoin Mm -hmm. at some point during the year. That was also wrong. It actually hit a high for the year of 47,967 on March 28th. It's low. It was at 15,631 on November 21st. And at the end of the year, it was trading in the $16,000, $17,000 range. Very wrong on that one. Just slightly off. Number four, I predicted that the yeah. Republicans would sweep the midterms. That was what election betting odds and polls kind of were showing at that point. Yeah, early in the year, yes. Yep, yep. It seemed likely to me that that was going to happen. So I thought I had a pretty safe one in the bag. Nope, that was wrong too. I actually was half right. You can give me maybe half credit. The I'll Republicans credit. did regain a majority in the House of Representatives, but they retained not having control of the Senate. Retain not having control. Yeah. I like how you worded that. See what I did that? Yeah. They retained their minority. Yes. So that was number four. And number five, I believed, we're going to get to whether I was right or wrong, yeah. that inflation would moderate and would end the year in the 3 to 4% range compared to at it was point. at that point greater than 6%. Mm-hmm. I was wrong on that. In fact, inflation picked up from that point on and only fell slowly really the rest of the year. As of the November reading, which came out in December, inflation was 7.1% year over year. And as of the time of this recording, we're about to get the December reading for the end of the year, expected to be in the mid sixes. So wrong on that one. Yeah, you're still averaging above where you think. Exactly. Yep. So probably not. This is a bonus one. Bonus. Try it's to worth get 100 points. We try to get five, but if you don't get any of those right and you get this one right, you come out ahead, I'm putting it all on the line, double or nothing. My prediction was that Max Verstappen would win. His second consecutive Formula One world title in his first year of these new cars that came out in 2022. And I was correct. You were right on that one. I was correct. It actually was not close at all. He blew everybody he blew away. everyone away. Despite a couple DNFs in the first couple races of the year. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Tough Did year. he not finish because he wrecked? No, or his he car He ran out of gas? Car blew up. Oh, Engine. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, not so fun. So anyway, I'm going to say that my bonus prediction 
That made None, up for everything it else. It negated all of yes. the other five I got wrong. So, Josh, let's talk about your winner. All right. How, so what did you think? We always both start with a prediction of yep. the SP 500. I was a little less optimistic at the start of the year. I said 8%, which, by the way, is a long term average. That's why I picked it. Wow. Yep. Really? You were going out on a limb. That's there. right. Uh, I was wrong. I was down 18%. So less wrong than me. Less wrong than you. So, yeah, <laughs> that's worth nothing. I did say a version of the Build Back Better bill would pass. So that was something back in 2021. Yep. They they did pass a small offshoot of that. Yep. But there was debate on whether they would be able to get more of that done while the Democrats have control of all three, the presidency, the House, and the Senate during that early stage. I was correct-ish in that they did pass a bill called the Inflation Reduction Act, or IRA, but that was a piecemeal of some of their high agendas, the biggest piece being the green energy. There's yep. a lot in there on that. So I'm going to give myself yeah, partial credit for not that. Not so much about inflation reduction. No, <laughs> but the Build Back Better was there. This was an offshoot it of was it. a portion. I, I'm going to give myself, and I said a less imposing one. So I'm actually giving myself really good credit for good that. Good job, They Josh. just didn't call it that. Great job. Number three, most Americans will not see a significant tax increase because part of that Build Back Better, there's a lot of debate on how they're going to pay for it. Because the Inflation Reduction Act was a smaller version, and a lot of it had to do with credits and things like that, there was no significant tax increase. So I was correct on that. You were one. correct. Boom. So I'm, you know, I'm looking pretty good here. You Two are. for three right you now. Are. Two for three right now. It falls apart from there. So number four, <laughs> Winter Olympics being the great United States that in I Beijing, live in. I believe in Beijing yeah. being the great United States that I live in and believe in. I said they're going to win the medal count because we have areas in this country that are cold. Some with snow. I was wrong. <laughs> Norway did awesome with 37 total medals. And they also did the same in the last one. So yeah, I know I have my hopes up. I was really hoping for, you <laughs> Home know, country bias the, here. Uh, the long jump, the skiing long jump was, was going to be it this year. The U S was in fifth though with 25, you know, we, we did all right. Now, the Russian Olympic Committee, the ROC, because the Russia's oh, yeah. technically banned, they were ahead of us. But I really don't want to count them because they're not even a country. They're a group of athletes oh, because think, they're banned from being yeah. in there because of... So I think we were actually fourth place. Okay, good job. We can argue that. Yep. No, still I'm still wrong. Argue with you still wrong that. either way. Mm-hmm. I did say, number five, there will be regulation on cryptocurrency by the end of the year. That didn't quite happen. No, no significant. Now, I mean, there's me, debate what did happen in, in cryptocurrency by the <laughs> end of the year? It, it got in big trouble. Big trouble. Uh, there were some uh, currency exchanges, ex- yeah, exchanges exchange, yeah, essentially. that got in trouble for how they were FTX. using client yeah. for not just holding the assets, but lending them out and, and Sam losing Sam freed. Them. Yes, a lot of stuff still under... I mean, that's going to be going on for a little while. Okay, so I'm not going to give you credit here, yes. but I will say that that what happened, mm-hmm. especially in the second half of 2022, pointed out the need more than ever yes. for... Well, that's going to be one of my oversight. so just wait. Yep. Just, do, just you wait. I'll wait. And so, then my bonus, bonus. because oh, I'm a Cleveland This is double or fan. nothing for you, too. This is double or just don't count it. <laughs> uh, I said the Cleveland Guardians would win the World Series... Not true. No. They did not. No. Houston Astros won. They did. They, a handful of years ago, had a big thing with cheating. If you don't know the story, pretty much they were stealing signs and somebody was oh, beating yeah, on a did. trash can yeah. to signal to the players. Huge thing. In fact, they got hit. The batters from the Astros got hit quite a bit early in the season because of that because a lot of teams were very mad about that. <laughs> Long story short, they won this one. So far, there's been no controversy. So that was beneficial for them, I think, to kind of get past that. Yeah, and, and win a World Series. Not that I was rooting for them, but it was there. Did not get that one. You Does did not, not count. But I for the five, I think I was three for five. You did. So. That was better than me. No, I was two for five. Two for I, ah, it's still better than me. So Josh, all right. I you need a dad joke. I need a dad joke. I need a joke. All right, here we go. We, we got a dad joke here. Entertainment. We like to go out and do stuff. Where do cows go for movies for entertainment? I just oh, said it. I would have said the movies. Up. Movies is the answer. I messed that all up. <laughs> messed that up. Oh, man. <laughs> the movies. Dude, That's dude, gold. Okay. <laughs> Come uh, on, give me another one. I got to give you another one. <laughs> I totally messed that one up. <laughs> Where did cows go to the movie? <laughs> so here's the one. This was one that my kids love. All right. How do you make a tissue dance? Blow your nose on it. You right? put a little boogie in it. Put a little boogie in it. <laughs> I love right. it. That was I better. It. I didn't mess that one. That up. is better. Good delivery, Josh. All right. So, that yeah. was 2022. 22. Horrible at guessing. Not we are good. not. So what are good. we going to get wrong this year? So let's go for it. <laughs> okay. Once again, have five and a bonus. All right. And I'm going to say some of these I think are going to happen again. Okay. Might have been wrong the first time. You got but it. I might get them this time. You got to bring them back. Okay. This is the one everyone's going to be listening to. Yep. 
S and P five hundred call again. Mm-hmm. I'm not good at this. No one's good at this actually. I believe the S and P five hundred will end 2023 at four thousand. Oh boy, nice round number. That's what I picked it. Four thousand is about four point two percent above its ending value. Mm. So that really gets you about a six percent return total return, including one point eight percent in dividends. Okay. Which is below average, yep. but much better than 2022. There you go. So that's do you want to go one. back and forth on these? Yeah, go for it. All right. So I will also do my S and P 500. You didn't look at these, so these are new. Oh, no, these you are brand new. I'm going that we're going to end this year double digits. I don't have a number, but I'm going to say above 10. percent Whoa! I know. Bullish. I am. Bye bye bye. I think uh, historically, when you have a rough year, the next year tends to be positive. That's why I not said always 4%. double digits, but I'm just saying there's a lot of potential if things work out. There you will know, be soft, some tailwinds. Soft dish landing. There'll be some tailwinds. I mean, there's geopolitical stuff. There's a lot that could change that could be a, a boon for the economy yeah. and for the market. Hey, so I'm saying good. plus 10. Be great if it worked out. Maybe it's less a prediction, more of hope. But yeah. you know that's where I'm at. You have some hopium over there. Yes. All right. Number two, I do think emerging markets are going to outperform U.S. stocks this year. And one of those reasons is a weakening U.S. dollar, which I kind of anticipate to somewhat continue to flat down from here for okay. the dollar. And so China has been in lockdown much more severe than the U.S. Yep. for years now. Mm-hmm. Chinese people have pretty much said, this is terrible. We're done with this. They're reopening. It's mm-hmm. great. Yes. So they're, they're starting to get some COVID vaccines Go out the there that markets. they've stole the, prop, the intellectual property from and they reverse engineer. They're making their, their own. own. There you go. And okay. I think that one of the bull cases for EM is China's reopening is going to be similar where a lot of pent-up demand could occur in the second half of the there you year. go. So that's one of my things that I think will happen Mine, this year. I also have a repeat in that crypto regulation. They will be some past this year. Okay. I think with everything that happened at the end of the seems year, like it needs to happen. It seems like it does. And I think that's something that both the Democrats and the Republicans, now that there's a split between the two, the house and the Senate could agree on. This could be one bill that they could both come to some sort of agreement on and pass. Because I think there's going to be a lot of things that just die. You know, they can't get through one side or the other. Right. This is one that both parties can look at what happened and say, yeah, we could probably come up with some regular, they always like to regulate stuff. So I think that's one that I'm going with. Here's one that I hope happens. Mm -hmm. I think it will. I think we're going to get some sort of resolution. I'm not saying what that will be. It could be bloody war. Yeah. Who knows? But some resolution between Russia and Ukraine. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't turn into a global war, but mm-hmm. I think it'll either go one way or the other, or they'll form some sort of agreement. There's going to be a resolution by the end of the year. By the end of the year. This kind of goes along with that and kind of what you said about China reopening is I think we're going to see supply and demand globally back to normal. Yeah. Because I think we're not there yet, obviously. Yeah. Uh, for instance, we I'm coaching for basketball and a bunch of our jerseys and stuff that got ordered were delayed and stuck somewhere overseas and it's, it was a whole mess. And with China reopening, there's, you know, I don't want to see them go back the other direction, but I don't think we're where we need to be. But I think by the end of next year, there's not going to be that worry or that frustration that we currently you think have. I'm going to have my free one day all the time Amazon Prime deliveries. That'd be Remember before COVID, one was, day delivery. It was, they were there. They were on top of this. Awesome. Same day in big cities. Mm-hmm. Crazy. I think we'll be back to more normalized. That's good. Supply day. Yep. Number four, I believe that the Fed is going to overdo the tightening that they're doing right now. They're going to go too far on restricting monetary policy, and they're going to see that the economy is slowing more than they want. And I think at the end of the year, you might get one rate cut. Okay. I think you're going to get a rate cut. So interest rates are going to be up a little, a couple more maybe times early in the year. Then things are going to be really starting to slow down from all the lag defect of the other bajillion interest rate hikes at the end of 2022 and that they're going to end up cutting okay. at the end of the year. Interesting. See, I'm saying no recession, 2023. No recession. no recession. I think we are going to see a slowdown, but I think, again, that job market is so strong right now that although we'll see a slowdown, they're not going to call it a recession because they're, they're still going to be that piece propping up. So yeah. there will be no official recession in 2023. I dig it. My fifth and mm-hmm. final regular prediction is a repeat as well. I think, again, that inflation is going to moderate and end the year at 3 to 4%. There you go. Now that's compared to 6 to 7% as we are right now. Yep. So uh, going heading towards the Federal Reserve's goal 
maybe not quite getting there by the end of the year, but heading in the right direction throughout the year. Okay. So, yeah. Now I'm saying the dollar, the U.S. dollar, will end stronger. Now, Ooh, you said it's going to weaken. On this one. And let me tell you my reasoning on this. I think we did a lot of the hard rate hikes last year, where a lot globally, especially the developed countries, have yet to really impact their inflation. So I think they're going to need to do some things, and I think the U.S. economy is going to look better, which will in- improve the dollar. See, I want to tell you... Josh, I'm probably wrong. ...that this can go both ways. It can go both because ways. Because as we're not going to be hiking rates, yes. and other central banks are going to be forced to be hiking rates, yes. there's what's called a yield differential. Yields. And so where we've got a huge yield premium over especially places like Europe, yep. that's going to close. And what that's going to do... One of my theses is that that is going to weaken the dollar and make other currencies more attractive to buy the other debt that's yielding higher. Okay. You think any globally you're going to see them put spending packages on the tail end after they raise hikes? Well, again, like you're talking about a slowdown is I just wonder if they're going to have a more condensed version. Because we started last year and we were able to push through that... I'm just not sure if they're going to... I think they're just going to mess with possible. their It is possible. I know more. that some... It, Europe is very weird the way it they works are specifically. Weird. That's, and I'm going to yeah. focus on that. So the Eurozone mm-hmm. is made up of a bunch of countries. Yep. But they have one central bank. Yep. And the European Central Bank targets different areas differently. So there's... Each country like can... Germany gets... Yeah. they're each, stronger. Each country can get their own situation. Now, as a as a overnight lending rate like the Fed has... The Eurozone has one. Mm-hmm. But in terms of bond issuance, all of the different countries can do their own bond issuing, which means that the European Central Bank can really do quantitative easing or and quantitative tightening, tightening at the same time. By yeah, by region. Yeah. So so they can they can do interest rate hikes for the zone, but they could similarly at the same time be loosening or easing monetary policy at via, place, the, location, via the debt market. Yeah. On each location, so That's Europe's crazy. A mess. They're they're crazy. Yeah, and, and in some instances, they're actually like doing QT on one end and QE on the other. Yeah, of the same in the same region. Weird. Yeah, they're manipulating yeah. yield curves essentially. Yeah. So, so that's crazy. We'll see what happens. That was my last one. I was like, you know, dollar. Hey, it's good. So I love a dollar. Strong dollar. Yeah. Sixth and final Bonus. one. What do you got? Max Verstappen will win his third consecutive oh, Formula One World Title. At that point, did, does anybody else race anymore? Are they just done? I mean, they're talking about uh, trying to bring a new team on. Mm-hmm. Mario Andretti, I believe. Yeah, heard of him. Yeah, so you, American, famous racer. He actually raced in Formula One. Mm-hmm. A lot of money in the Andretti family for IndyCar here in the U.S. Yes. But putting, trying to put together a Formula One team backed by Cadillac. And remind me, the Indianapolis 500 is not a Formula That's One? That's Indy. Racing. IndyCar racing. Yeah, IndyCar. They look the same. They are not the same. They're very different. Okay. But they look similar. Yeah. I can see where you would get Yeah, that. they do. They have the open wheels. And yep. They're driving around. The guy sits in there. No, no, no now, roof. Now, uh, IndyCars, as of the last handful of years ago, have milk. little windshields. Oh, yeah. You do get milk if you win the yeah. Indy 500. Windshields. Ooh, for bugs. Called the aero screen or whatever. Okay. For safety. Oh. So, like, if a tire flies off and hits oh. the windshield, not the driver's head. Yeah, makes sense. And Formula One has what's called the halo which is like a roll bar. Cage. It looks like a little roll cage. It goes around the top and then straight down the front, and you just avoid looking at the bar. Yeah, that seems like a, it's like a football I think helmet. You need to put two though. Like I would rather yep. have two nope, instead of one, one in straight the in the middle. I know. Like the one thing I want to look at at 400 exactly. miles an hour yeah. is right down the mo- middle middle yep. of the road. So okay. that is yeah, that's an okay. interesting thing. So and yeah, the, that's my bonus. What's yours? Uh, I'm a very loyal person, so I'm going to say the Cleveland Guardians. Okay, are going to finally win a World Series. It's been a while for them. Yeah, it's been quite a while, and so. This is it. This is the year. This is the year. This is the year. This is so. This is the year. We've made a lot of predictions here. Yep. Chances of the majority of them being correct yeah, is good. very low. We might get a couple. We'll see. That's what we should do, though. I need to be more just opposite of what you say. Then somebody's going to get it right. That's right. That's I exactly think Max it. Verstappen is not going to win. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, he I might not. Know. He might not. How many? How many can you win in a row? I don't ask Lewis. Well, apparently, three is what you think. That's what I'm. At least that's what I'm hoping for. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. And uh, please share this episode if you know someone who was looking at what might happen in 2023. Maybe these will give them some ideas of what might or might not happen. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. That way you get new episodes every single Thursday. And we would love it if you'd leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you're listening to us. Until next Thursday, have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye. 
Thank you for listening to the Invested Dads podcast. This episode has ended, but your journey towards a better financial future doesn't have to. Head over to theinvesteddads.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and we had a positive impact on your life, leave us a review. Click subscribe and don't miss the next episode. Josh Robb and Austin Wilson work for Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. All opinions expressed by Josh, Austin, or any podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. There is no guarantee that the statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses, which would reduce returns. Securities investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment plan or strategy will be successful.